Hi everyone, I'm Yo, and this is Virginia. Welcome to our YouTube channel, Knowing, Caring, and Loving Our Lady Parts. So today we have a great video on pelvic floor muscles doing Kegels part three. So learning how to integrate these amazing lady part muscles functionally, which is really important. So they work on a day-to-day -day basis. So let's get started. <music> know how to recruit those muscles and where they are, what other things should you do that are really important? So you know that these muscles work 24 seven to support your pelvic organs that all sit here and to prevent you from leaking all that good stuff, urine, fecal matter, and gas. So you want to be able to integrate those muscles functionally, which means that you don't want to have to think about it. Um, they should just be working as you need them day to day when you're doing all your fun activities. What you want to try to do is or do that squeeze and lift in different positions that are more functional, but also in standing. So standing is more functional because often people say that they're leaking when they're walking, when they're sneezing. You don't often, well, you sneeze when you're lying down, but you don't often leak as much because you've got that force of gravity pulling everything down. So what you want to try to do is do more sets functionally. So you can incorporate them in something like brushing your teeth in the morning. So you're pulling those pelvic floor muscles up against gravity, which is harder than doing it when you're lying down. So it becomes a little bit more of a challenge, like adding a weight to those exercises. So one of the things is though, if you have a little bit of a dysfunction or you're weak in these areas and you have some symptoms, try to integrate these muscles as you're doing your functional activities, such as when you lift, try to recruit those muscles before to protect the pelvic floor. When you're actually doing any kind of your exercises like yoga, when you're maintaining um, a postural connection, when you're in mountain pose, doing any of your warrior poses, think about bringing in those pelvic floor muscles before setting them. So pulling groin up in your posture and recruiting them in your daily activities. So for example, if you are going for a daily walk, you can think of your postural alignment and pulling those pelvic floor muscles in a very natural, neutral setting though. So not too hard when you feel like you're really tightening them, but just be aware of them. If you have some weaknesses in certain activities, it's good to practice bringing the pelvic floor muscles or recruiting them in those positions. So for example, if you are leaking when you are running or jumping, try to squeeze those muscles before you run or jump, practice running on the spot. So those muscles are able to support everything and close that urethra when you have that compression going on with jumping or running activities. So the other thing in terms of integrating these pelvic floor muscles functionally is think of when you're bringing in your posture, remember we talked about postural alignment or I will in a video, make sure you're doing the exercises with a good postural alignment. Usually when you maintain a good posture, you're not even thinking about it, but you're actually pulling these muscles because they work synergistically, which means they work together with those core abdominal muscles, the transversus abdominis. Okay, so think about what's happening when you're standing and what muscles are supporting your pelvis and your core, which are usually those pelvic floor muscles, those lady part muscles, and also other muscles of the core and other muscles of the hip, like the gluteus medius and muscles in the back that fire, the little uh, muscles called the multifidus. Um, now that you know how to do a Kegel and recruit them properly, you want them to work with the other core muscles. So remember when you're integrating these pelvic floor muscles functionally, Make sure you're in a good posture alignment. So in review, remember that you're going to be maintaining this lower doses of this curve of your spine as opposed to being slouched like this and you can't even breathe and bring in the pelvic floor muscles at all um, or like this where you're too far forward. So the optimal alignment is kind of, I think of my ribs over my hips in a position, but not too far forward, okay? Um, so think of bringing in the pelvic floor muscles when you're doing any activities during the day. So let's say you're going into a squat position. Think of bringing in the pelvic floor muscles, getting that squeeze and lift, setting your core, because it all works together, and then doing a squat. Or let's say you're doing weights. Think about pulling the pelvic floor muscles at the same time. And usually you're maintaining a good posture. You're getting in those abdominals with it, the transversus abdominis that works with the pelvic floor. The other thing is I really like functionally how I progress on my clients. I'll get them to do any balanced posture. So you don't have to get fancy and do like a tree 
or any of the yoga poses. You could even just, okay, let's do you at the sink because I know we're all busy, even when, uh, if, even if it is during the pandemic. And you can sort of maintain a good, if you're balancing, you're functionally bringing in the core muscles with your abdominals. So you can even just do a balance and let's say you're at the sink and you're doing the dishes and then you could sort of change it up a little bit and move your leg. Of course, you're, if you're into yoga, definitely pull in the pelvic floor muscles with a transversus and go into a tree or anything else that you might be doing during your practices. Okay, so try to incorporate things functionally and challenge the pelvic floor muscles to simulate what they should be doing during activities where let's say you have some weakness or it's leaking like I was saying before you jump. So pull in the pelvic floor muscles and do a little jump or maybe do a little bit of a running on the spot. Running. It's like adding a weight to these exercises because then you're getting a little bit more sort of compression with things pushing it down and you're getting the running with it. So you're training them to work during those activities where they have failed before or where you've had some leakage. So thanks everybody for tuning into this video about progressing your pelvic floor muscles functionally. Please don't forget to hit that subscribe button and tell your friends. And Virginia, I look forward to seeing you soon.